everyone. Thank you so much for joining the call. Wow, what a luscious group of people this morning. Man, uh, we started, hold on a second here. Let me kind of go back. Uh, thank you all for being on the call. We started this Monday off with Ms. Giles and Dristel, dropped the mic, did a wonderful job. Mr. Julian Lewis took it out the park. Mr. Shaquille Cooper, OMG. He will be back with us. Oh my God, he was amazing. And then yesterday we had Mr. David Lowe, but today we have a young lady from the Sacro Tomato area. I call it Sacro Tomato. But before I introduce, I'd like to give a shout out to Mr. Carter in San Diego there. Sir, good morning. Ms. Lisa, thank you so much. Ms. Kathleen Williams, thank you for being on the call today. Uh, Mr. Andrew R R Romos, excuse me, from Woodland, California. Thank you so much. Hey, Bill. Uh, oh, 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 Ms. Kanahara out in Japan. Good morning, young lady. How you doing, Kingo? There you go. Hey, Bill Howard, thank you so much. Ms. Caroline Baker, part of the Baker organization. Christina, thank you so much for joining. Mr. Dave Culver, the professor, thank you so much. My favorite school teacher in Nashville, Ms. Dominic Young, thank you so much. Back to Arizona, Ms. Candy Epperly, thank you so much. Mr. Freddie Sherman, good morning, sir. Ms. Marcia Carter in Fresno, thank you. Mr. Daryl Ranson up in Nashville, thank you. Mr. Payon on Japan, thank you so much for joining. Ms. Castro down in Phoenix, Arizona. Ms. Marie, thank you. Mr. Marvin Carter, Regional Director in Fresno, thank you so much. Hi, Ms. Pat Robinson out in Oakland. Hey. <laughs> Ms. Meyer Hernandez, thank you so much for being on the call today. Ms. Pat, Pat and Frank, there you go. Pat and Frank Bowman out there in Elk Grove, California. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Mr. Michael Hampton from Oklahoma, thank you for joining. Mr. Sergio down in Mexico. Yes, you have la Espanol. Ah, Mr. Sam Foster, my favorite friend down there in uh, down in Dallas, Texas, hanging out with Mr. Uh, T.D. Jakes at his ministry. Thank you so much, Miss Sarah Bond. I've been praying for you, young lady. You're back. You got yes. I've been praying for you. Hey, Regional Director Miss Natasha Ismail out of Fresno, California. Thank you so much, Regional Director out of Fresno, California, Miss Rose Guerrero King. Thank you so much, and I know her hubby somewhere out there, Mr. Chris King. Let's give him a shout out as well. Winston Herbert, thank you for joining. T.J. in Ohio. Thank you, dear. Uh, Zoe Duffy, part of the Baker organization. Thank you so much. Mr. Krista McDowell, good morning, sir. Mr. Harris Mills, I know you got a big smile on your face. You're always out there smiling. Regional director, the biggest organization in Southern California who knocked the ball out the park, oh my God, on Tuesday. The one and only, the fabulous Mr. Julian Lewis, regional director. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Miss Eileen, I see you out there always smiling. You're so sweet. Regional director here in Las Vegas, Nevada, Mr. Brian Baker, part of the bakery organization. Over a million served. <laughs> regional director, Miss Evelyn Phibbs down in Fresno. Thank you, dear. Amazing call you did two weeks ago for us. We're going to have you back. Mr. Harold Gaston, thank you so much. Today, we got a young lady that hails from the Sacramento area. She's a little piece of leather, but she's well put together. <laughs> Uh, she, her background is in the mental health field, and her husband is a great guy. Uh, he, he, Mr. Brad is amazing. He has they have several businesses. One is the construction business. There's a lot of that going on construction business. They uh, they are uh, they are platinum RVPs in ACN. She's a great coach trainer. She had built a business out uh, out of the U.S. She is a full time at ACN, and she's a dear friend of mine. Without further ado, can we give a warm Friday morning follow up Friday applause to Miss Carrie Roder, Regional Vice President Platinum? Good morning. That was good morning. 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 Right? Oh my God, you are the best way to start my day. I swear to goodness, you are so amazing. So first of all, let me say, wow, what a lineup this week. So thank you for uh, allowing me to end your uh, leadership morning calls this Friday. So hope to do justice to the other panel of amazing leaders you had the, earlier this week. Of course, none other than Mr. Thomas himself. It's funny because when Mr. Thomas and I talked a couple days ago about me doing this this morning, he said, you know, honey, just whatever's on your heart, just speak from your heart. So I've spent the last couple of days thinking about what can I share. And then Wednesday afternoon, we, all the RDs and above, we were blown away by this week's uh, call. And as I was feverishly taking notes, I was giggling yesterday. I was like, I bet you whoever spoke yesterday, Mr. David Lowe <laughs> talked about a lot of what the call was about. But I want to I uh, share with you my perspective because it's kind of like, uh, you know, five people witness an accident and there's five different perspectives of what they witness, even though it's the same accident. And so as I go through the training that I have for us today or more of the conversation, really, and one of the things I want you to be 
um, considerate of is that Mr. Al Thomas consistently over and over and over again is one of the top producing senior vice presidents, not just in our ACN company, but globally in direct sales. This man has seen it all. You wonder why he can greet us every single morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, like he's stuck on a thing. It's because his days, his mornings, his afternoons, his evenings, while he sleeps, he is joyous because the level of success he's been able to attain is just astronomical. I know for me, when I set goals of a top producing senior vice president, you know, he's an example that I definitely shoot for. So I share all that with you because those of you who've heard, heard me on this call before know that Mr. Thomas has been a stable mentor of mine for over to her about 10 years now and has become a dear friend. And um, yeah, some of you caught that one leadership call with my husband and Mr. Thomas being silly. So yeah, because that got picture got sent to Tony Kupitz. That was fun. Anyway, <laughs> um, okay, so I'm so excited for tonight tonight for today. Oh my gosh. Okay. So uh, first of all, I want to check in with all of you. There's a whole bunch of us on the line and many of you have your cameras up. Thank you so very much for doing that. I'll try to click through to see all of you. But the first thing I want to do is check in. You know, it's been a little while since I've been on this call. And for those of you who've been on the calls with me before, you know, we've talked about COVID and since then, you know, all this other um, mayhem, I'll call it, is happening in the world, all this uh, unrest. And I know it affects every single one of us differently. And I just want to check in and, and make sure that, that all of my friends, all of my ACN family, that you're okay. Um, I, as Mr. Thomas said, you know, I have two degrees in psychology. I, I was clinically trained in mental health prior to going into business ownership. And that is my heart's desire is to make sure that everybody lives a healthy quality life. And gosh, our mental health is such a big part of that. So please make sure that you're taking care of yourself, uh, not just today and not just during this window of turmoil, but, or whatever you want to call it, but you know, every day. And um, it's that whole concept that, uh, you know, when we get on our airplanes to travel to see each other in ACN, you know, the stewardess says, put your oxygen mask on yourself before you go to support everybody else. It's the same thing. We have to keep ourselves healthy in order to be able to really be effective in anything and everything that it is we do. So I hope that you are all okay. Uh, welcome to Japan. And there was somebody here from uh, UK and all that. That's amazing. Everybody across the country, welcome. I'm excited. I'm Carrie Roeder. Uh, I've been in ACN for 10 and a half years now. I got started in May of 2010. And I'll give you my backdrop. And for those of you who've heard it, I want you to hear it again. And there's a reason why I want you to hear it, okay? So my husband and I, Brad, we uh, used to own four traditional businesses under one corporation umbrella. And in our traditional business, the old family that we bought it from did a very good job of coaching us in business. And they taught us that there was going to be downturns in the economy. So we actually prepared for that. And so when 2007 hit, 2007, 2008, and 2009, we were able to survive uh, because we had four streams of income and we had been set up pretty well. Well, <laughs> uh, when you stop drawing a salary and you start using all your savings, it goes, right? And so 2010, that downturn caught up to us to no fault of my husband and I. We were both working seven days a week in order to keep our traditional businesses going. And I share that with you because we are in the middle towards the end, whatever you want to call it, we don't know, of uh, another economic crisis that many people's income is being affected no fault of their own, right? So I share that with you because timing in business Part of the conversation I want to talk to you about is part of what Mr. Tony Kupitz said. So now when we get to that part of the Mr. Kupitz conversation, I want you to remember, remember my story. I was recruited at the correct time. If I had been recruited any earlier than April, May of 2010, I would have been a hard, fast no. I had four traditional businesses. I was doing well. I was not interested in anything else, but timing was right for me. So. As I was praying to figure out what conversation to have with all of you. Um, and by the way, if you have any questions for me, just write it in the chat thing and I'll try to monitor that. But um, as I was trying to pray to decide to talk to God last night as I was falling asleep, that I, you would, he would give me the wisdom of what to share. 
Ironically, I dreamt about Mr. Tony Kupitz. <laughs> so here was my dream uh, last night. We were all together, yay, but we were all together physically. And um, as we're all sitting around, there was all, a bunch of us leaders. There was a bunch of new IBOs, a bunch of seasoned IBOs. And uh, we had pre-organized for Mr. Kupitz to show up. So Mr. Kupitz comes in in the middle of our leadership conversation as he does. And he quietly sits down because he never likes to be the big deal. And he quietly sits down and, you know, everybody notices him. So, oh, tensions fly, right? The excitement. And so as questions, it's a Q&A session. It was like a round table. It was really weird. But as IBOs were asking us leaders questions and we were giving answers, Mr. Kupitz was listening at this point. Well, this one woman, it was really weird. She kind of scooted her chair forward and said, Mr. Kupitz is here and I want to hear from him because I'm not having success in my business. And as soon as he tells me what to do, then I'm going to start making money here. And all of us leaders look at Mr. Kupitz and Mr. Kupitz does what he does. He kind of looks down like, yeah, no, that's not why you're having success, not having success. He looks down, we all look at each other with kind of internal giggling, just the knowingness that Mr. Kupitz isn't going to give you the answers to how to build your business and how to become successful. Here's why I say this, okay, and I think Tony would agree with me. See, Tony teaches us to teach you to do the work that it takes. And so when I woke up this morning and I thought about that dream, I thought, okay, that's interesting because... Um, as if you really think about this, here's what Tony said, Mr. Kupitz says, and he even said it on Wednesday's call. If you know how to go RD, you know how to go RVP. And if you know how to go RVP, you know how to go SVP. And if you know how to go SVP, you know how to produce other SVPs. Okay, here's something that uh, Mr. Franco Lofranco said on Wednesday's call that is completely relevant to this conversation. He said, it's a Bible quote, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And I share that with you because Mr. Tony Kupitz says that we are promoters. We're promoters. And he, you've heard, many of you have heard him talk about, you know, don't get emotionally involved in the answers, right? And he, some of you have seen this training, hasn't done it in years, but it goes like this. You know, you ask somebody, you know, are you interested? You know, they see the presentation, are you interested? They go like this. That's Mr. Thomas. Yep, that was me, right? Sign me up, I'll take two. Okay, there's people who go, I don't know, I have questions and they look like this. And then there's people who are uninterested or negative to the opportunity and they look like this, right? And it's funny because when he does that training, he doesn't use words, but we all know the answer of the guess, right? So what I'm suggesting here is that if Mr. Kubitz says that we're promoters, are you promoting your business? Now, I'm gonna have two conversations here, um, but I'm gonna quote a little bit more from Mr. Franco Lofranco from Wednesday. Okay, he says this, am I ready to produce and be the change in my team and my family? Am I ready to produce and be the change in my team and in my family? So September, 2020 could be the greatest month yet. Now, now, Mr. Kupitz could absolutely tell every single one of us how to be the top producing, you know, senior vice president of the company. Absolutely. The point of that conversation is that you don't need Mr. Kupitz because Mr. Kupitz trains the RVPs and SVPs and the RDs who then train, you know, everybody else in the business of duplication. So this is a very basic business that we have. Very basic business. And the simplicity of what we do, we recruit we get customers and we teach other people to get customers and we attend events. That's the simplicity of what we do. Now, are there nuances to go regional director, regional vice president, senior vice president? Of course there is. So the nuances, that's where having an individual coach like Mr. Thomas or any of the top producing regional vice presidents and regional directors on this call. We, we've learned the nuances either through pain, <laughs> doing it ourselves, but most of us, defer to a leader and say, Mr. Thomas, what's your pain? Like, what can I anticipate? What have you gone through? Oftentimes people, people make fun of me because people will call me like all oh, crying upset and I get all yay animated when people are upset 
building their business. They're like, hey, you really are kind of crazy. Yeah, I am. Because here's the thing. The fact that you had a challenge, the fact that you had a struggle tells me you're actively building your business because this business is not void of challenges. It's not void of difficulties. Mr. Thomas? Oh, you're not, you have to unmute yourself. Now, speaking of challenges, let's kind of pivot a little bit. Tell some of the leaders out here, the new people, you know, that some of them know you are, some of them don't know you are. What are some of the challenges you had to do to get to be a regional director? And then tell us some of the challenges and how long, you know, to be a regional vice president. Because there's a lot of new people that need to hear some of the struggles Perfect. that you went through, you and Brad went through. Because when you first signed up, did you sign up one position? You signed up two positions. Tell us about that. Perfect. Tell us the struggles. So we signed up two positions. Uh, I bought two that day. One for me, one for him. And uh, what's interesting is that, so I got started in May of 2010. I was working seven days a week without a day off. Uh, our daughter was five in the kindergarten. I volunteered in her classroom every single day. I was the room mom, so I got to do all the parties. <laughs> I was on the board of directors of the Chamber of Commerce of my town. I chaired an ambassador team for the chamber, which means four or five extra hours volunteer I did for the business community. And I belong to a community service club with my dad. So I share that with you because he wants me to tell you about challenges. My, time, my challenge was time, okay? My challenge was time. So <laughs> you guys remember uh, hearing, you know, back walking to school, I used to walk in the snow with no shoes uphill both ways, right? Yeah, see, Regional director was much harder when I went for it 10 years ago than what it is today. Regional vice president was much harder when I got it done in three, we got it done in three and a half years than it is today. So the challenges for me were time. Um, what I have found learning now, the challenge for many people is coachability, meaning not actually recruiting your entire list of, of people that you know, your friends, your family, and your business contacts. I went out there and I started, I make phone calls. So that part wasn't the, the challenge. The, uh, the, problem, the, the problem for me was follow up. See, I made an instant decision that day, seeing the information. I that some of us make that instant decision and go for it. Many people need to see it multiple times, need to get their questions answered, need to go to training. And so where I should have been better at in the beginning is following through to make sure that as my friends, family, and business contacts saw the business information, that I followed up with them to ask them to make a decision. Do you want to make money with me and partner, or do you want to support my family and become our customer? And so if you, if you can learn from my pain, right? If you're brand new on this line, don't prejudge. My husband and I were prejudged in a bad way. Uh, somebody thought, one of my business colleagues thought we would never do this. <laughs> my cousin fortunately called me. Um, but don't prejudge and call everybody. Get them in front of Mr. Thomas or whomever your leader is that you're working with. Get them in front of the information. And if they don't make a decision in that moment, follow through. How, how were you prejudged about this business? Tell us about that. So in April of 2010, two men got started. One is a business contact of mine. Uh, I used to pay him to embroider my shirts. So we knew my husband and I pretty well. And he saw us owning four businesses. We own our home, nice cars, vacations, et cetera. And when he was making his list, he wrote, you know, Brad and Carrie wrote her and went, no, they'll never do this and crossed our names off. Another man, my cousin was getting started. By the way, he had to see it four times before he got started. Okay. Fourth time he gets started, uh, fourth time he sees he gets started, he starts to make his list. He gets to me, he's like, oh my God, my cousin up in Auburn, like she's four businesses, home, success, you know, cars, vacations. She's going to kill this thing. So Jeff, my business contact, crossed my name off thinking that I would never do this. My cousin allowed me to make my own independent decision. He allowed me to meet my mentor, Mrs. Renee Wagner. She presented the business to me and I made a decision from there. Now, why would why why did Jeff cross your office listing? Ah, they won't do it. Why, what, what was what was his thoughts? Because this is very we were, important. He huh? two, two things. He thought we were too successful. And too successful. Too successful. And my husband's in construction. He thought Brad would never be interested in doing this. 
So the point I'm, I'm getting across, the reason why I'm going down this this rabbit hole is to let new people up there, because a lot of people on the call today have a people on their list that they have an approach thinking, ah, they're so successful. Oh, they got three cars. Oh, they got a big house. They're more in debt than most people are on the call here are. And the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this out because I'm, I'm kind of Q&A in a little bit is because I want to bring out some of the things that people think, people like yourself, who, I mean, look at your agenda. You had no time. All these committees and school and all these commitments you had. And then you had your own business. And you guys had four businesses together in one corporation. And people think people like you are so busy that you won't go do it. And like you said, that's why Jeff crossed you off this list. They ah, they're busy. They're successful. And that's the exact point I want to get across to people. The ones you think won't, will, and the ones you think will, won't. So don't prejudge. Look at that word prejudice. Slash it in half means prejudge. Don't prejudge anybody. You can't tell the duds from the studs, the zeros from the heroes. Just put everybody on your list and go at it. Continue on with that story. So to, to follow up with that story, so I saw it independent of my husband. It's a long story how that even came about. But I saw it independent of my husband. I made a decision. Um, I made the mistake. I went home and explained ACN to Brad verbally. And here's, let me give you a backdrop. We've been together now for 23 years. We've owned three homes. I do the budgets in our house. I do very well. And when I went home and explained it to him, I have two degrees. Like I'm in, in his world, I'm successful. Okay. Brad's world. I went home, explained to him. He's like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Short version. I had a home meeting at my house. Mrs. Renee Wagner came up, did the presentation. Brad's like, that makes perfect sense. You know, you're going to kill this thing. You're going you're gonna to be making a ton of money. I get going. I'm very close to uh, regional director. Brad sees my excitement. He sees my money. <laughs> and he's like, can I go to an event with you? No. Anyway, jumps in the car on a Friday night. So I'm sharing this with you because power of events, right? I was going to event, to event, to event, to event. I was having success, having success. My husband sees my excitement. He finally goes to an event where Mr. Al Thomas was. And Mr. Thomas sold him on doing this with me. And at that moment, um, he, no, I'm sorry, I was already a regional director. Um, so my struggle to regional director was, I, I had the support of my husband at home, but regardless of that, I was doing it for him and our daughter. So I was doing it without his support or not. All right, so in other words, I'm gonna, I'm gonna regurgitate this a little slower for everybody. She made a decision. No, she said she made a decision to put two positions, one for her and one for her husband because she is an entrepreneur, so is her husband. So she made, write that down, right? She made a decision to get started and then went home to explain it to Brad, her husband, who I know, and he did not see it. How many times does the spouse, one or the other, see it? Some, pay attention now. Some, you may see it, your other half may not see it, but keep going, keep going. Notice what she said. She kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. And he said, it's something you could go do. Not me, but you. But she kept going despite that, but being supportive. Hey, you do it, it's your deal. And then as she became successful, he came to an event. And that's the power of the Zoom call events. And one of the things I'm going to put a commercial in here, some of you folks out there have got people that you did a one-on-one -on -one with, two-on-one -on, -one on a Zoom call or a coffee or whatever, get them on these morning calls, even though they're not in the business, this would be considered, get them to an event, because now they see people from international all on this Zoom call, that they go, oh my God, this is bigger than I thought it was, now you got some momentum going. So use these calls to have people look at it for a second look, a third look, a fourth look, whatever it takes, but get people on these calls, get guests on here because they're powerful for guests as well. So she made a decision, two positions, husband and see it, explained it to him, went to an event, got fired up, continue. So Chris Cantill says, prejudging the chicken list and the process is changing that. Congratulations. Now you go regional vice president, Chris. And Mr. Julian Lewis, who's on the verge of regional vice president, says he did the same thing, got in trouble when he got home. He did it anyway. Love it. And yes, Brad is one of the best presenters in the company. I'm very proud of my husband. Um, real quick, do I want to share with you about the concept of what Mr. Cooper said about promoting, okay? So those of you who are new on this call, just go attack your list. Go share with everybody. Don't prejudge. Just get the information out here. And here's why. Longevity equals credibility. So as time goes by and you're in ACN longer, if people know what you're doing, there gives them a possibility to circle around and either become a customer 
which is where our income comes from, right? We have to have our own minimum customer base in order to maximize the uh, compensation plan. Um, but it also gives a chance for people to become independent business owners. So let me give you a story. When we started uh, identity theft protection, I was with Brad's side of the family and I, we were sitting around in the living room hanging out and I said, oh, hey, by the way, we now have identity theft protection. And my brother-in-law, who likes to save a penny, says, oh, I already have it, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, if you wouldn't mind checking mine out, that'd be great. He kind of passed me over and I was like, whatever. So I promoted it. It was out there. Well, recently, my mother-in-law got her credit card um, compromised. So she calls up Brad. I need that identity thing for credit cards. So I get with her. We sign up the year account. So eight points. Okay. We're entering all the information in uh, her credit cards, her bank accounts, which, oh my God, those need to be protected. Trust me. So as we're going through everything, I said, your social security is protected, your driver's license. She goes, well, what about Jim, my father-in-law? And I said, no, because each adult needs to have his own. She goes, okay, well, it, it's fine. And I said, okay, so let me just help you think this through. My in-laws are retired. My father-in-law is a retired superior court judge. And um, she calls it when the eagle shits on the first of the month, it poops big. <laughs> he gets paid very handsomely. And I said, you know, his social security is not protected. And that's attached to his uh, money. He comes from his judge retirement. And she, her eyes got big and she's like, sign him up. So in one setting, I got 18 points by two year ID seal accounts. Now, did I get it the day we signed up ID seal? No, but if I hadn't mentioned it to the family when we were all together, it wouldn't have been there for when it, the timing was right for my mother-in-law, okay? So I'm not just talking new IBOs and all that. I'm talking your personal customer base. We can make 20%. Now on the note that Mr. Thomas was talking about, I have a position and my husband has a position and we're very close to getting my husband's position to 20%, okay? That's huge. However, I overwrite him. That's 24% that we're going to bring in our household off of the work that I'm doing. Yes, I'm making the money on mine too, but imagine that 24% for the same work you're already doing. You know, you made a good point there. See, that's why you have to have two positions. Good to have two positions. See, a lot of people don't look at this as a business like owner like you do because you understand business. That's why you came with, with two positions, not just let me try it out stuff. Hey, let me come in and work it and let me get override on the other position as well as my position. That's powerful because nobody's paying 24%, let alone 20% today. That's powerful. But also longevity. And now, you know, long jeopardy equals credibility. Some of you don't understand that, but that is so powerful. And another point she made before we close the call out that was very powerful. She talked about, she got, she was, I love that. She got in the family gathering with all the family and said, hey, by the way, and she exposed Identity Shield to everybody. See, some of us out there, I don't know why we're so scared to promote that in front of our whole family. I don't know why, I don't know why that is. Uh, being 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 in uh, uh, Miss Carrie Rota in, in in the uh, industry of, of of mental health <laughs> care industry, why do so many people are afraid when they get in a family gathering to exploit or explain what they do to their whole family? Why do you think that is? Fear fear of judgment, fear of ridicule, fear of not being accepted, um, and fear but, that uh, that you know I mean truly that they, they might get made fun of and. But, but they've already been made fun of. They just ain't did it in front of their face. <laughs> that's say. That's Your exactly family's been talking you about you. <laughs> that's exactly what they train. You train us. And yeah. here's, my, here's my mindset. And this has always been my mindset, you guys. Always before ACN. My mortgage is expensive. I live in California. I have a very expensive mortgage with an average home. Okay. So anyone who dares judges me, anyone who dare judges me, if I'm going to buy into your opinion, you better be best be willing to pay my mortgage. By the way, my 15 year old is expensive. So if you are going to pay my mortgage, my daughter's way and my utilities, my car expenses, because I only get Chevron Supreme, then you are welcome to put your opinion on me. And if you are not, you and your opinion can go out that door because I could give a rat's patootie because until you're willing to put my daughter first, screw you and your opinion. There you go. 
That's what I'm talking about. You just drop the mic right there. Just drop it on them. Just drop it on them. Just drop it on them. Because that's so true. Some of you folks out there worried about what they're going to say about you. Let me tell you, they've been talking about you. They've been talking about you. Not in your face, but they've been talking about you. Oh, they're in that pyramid deal. Oh, they're in that phone thing. Blah, 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 blah. But you know what? They don't pay none of your bills. You know what? And what you got to understand, this is your business. And don't be afraid to expose them. Let me tell you something. I got a call the other day from my ex-mother-in-law calls me. Uh, text me, hey, I'm ready for uh, talk about a uh, about about um, alarm system. Oh, but what if I never exposed her to her? I told her she moved to a new house six months ago. Let me know when you get rid of your alarm system. You know, you guys are older, you're senior citizens, you need to have an alarm system. I get a text day before yesterday. I think we're ready now. I got on the phone, got on the phone with with uh, with 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 uh, with a uh, 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 vivid. We designed a plan for it. Like, okay, give me a day to think it because you're older, you got to mold it through. But here again. If I never exposed my ex-mother-in-law, it's like, so what? What are you so afraid of? Fear, F-E-A-R, false education appearing real. We're in your little bind thinking, nye, 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 nye. that's why you're stuck right where you're at. Man, set yourself on fire and let the whole world come out and watch you burn. My God, it's so crazy. We live in the greatest, excuse my French, the greatest country in the world, and we're scared to tell people about what we do? Oh my God, are you kidding me? A few words in closing, dear. A few words in closing. <sighs> A few words in closing. Wow. Um, just do it. Yeah, and do it. it. And okay. do it. Along that line, and, and it's funny because people... It, when we when we get together, people go, oh my gosh, you know, you're so confident. If I just have a, a portion of your confidence, absolutely. You're welcome to take a portion of my confidence because it rebuilds upon itself. Hopefully <clears throat> that doesn't sound egotistical. I'm just saying, I know who I am. I've went through a lot of stuff in the first 40 years of my life. And now that I'm close to 50, I know who I am. And because I know who I am, I walk with confidence. And because I walk with confidence, I can go out there and tell people and promote, like Mr. Cooper says to do, what it is I do, not caring what they say for the, all the reasons that I just said. So whatever you have to do to start to gain some confidence in yourself so that you can put your shoulders back, your chest up, your chin up, and put a smile on your face and go out there with pride knowing that you are phenomenal. You are worth it. Your family is worth it. Why you're doing this is worth it. But speak with confidence. Move with confidence. And if somebody doesn't want it, fine. Roll over them. Barrel over them like a 200-mile-an-hour train. You speak with confidence. You speak with the knowingness of who it is you are and that you are a top-producing senior vice president and get your way. Get her done, get her done, get her done, get her done. I should have put my get her done hat up. Get her done. Get her. I got it. I got one. Get her done. Get her done. Hey, listen, folks. I want to thank. Can we show Miss Carrie? Uh, 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 wrote her some love. Come on, show her some love. How great this call was. I hope you guys got a lot, and I want to bring out and dig into. Her. That's why I want to do a little uh, question for her and kind of dig in a little deep on it. But don't forget tonight, six o'clock. We got a we got promotions. Anybody got promoted, Mr. Lewis and your group, Mr. King. Anybody got promoted or, or got in the business? Make sure they get it to Mr. Bree Clements. So we can add it to the list tonight. Uh, wow, Chris King and Miss, uh, <laughs> Miss Rose Guerrero. Good. Great call. Well done. Great, 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 great. I hope you guys got a lot of tea. Successful people are still looking, especially after this climate. Hey, don't forget, tonight at 6 o'clock p.m., we're going to have Al's Happy Hour. And all the regional directors that are on time, I want you to be part of the panel tonight. All the RDs on time or higher, be early and be part of the panel tonight. And we're going to have a little Q&A with just the leaders on the ha Al's happy hour. Ms. Rotor, you're more than welcome to come back and join us at 6, 6, 6, 6 o'clock p.m. with your favorite beverage. It's Al's happy hour. We're doing a happy hour here every Friday on at 6 o'clock. So all the regional directors and higher, please come back and be a part of the panel. And we're going to have a great time tonight. And with that, I want to thank everybody on the call today. Tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, we will have leadership. Leadership tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. 6 o'clock p.m. I have Mr. Julian Lewis going to step in for me while I go up to Seattle and eat some beautiful food and see my cousin who's a weather reporter on Channel 4 up there on chemo. And then, uh, I mean, that's the station. That's what they call it. That is in chemo. And then Sunday night at 6 o'clock, Ms. Rose Guerrero King will be back for part two on Sunday. OMG, if you missed last Sunday's training on product, oh, go back to the channel, Destiny International, and go back and listen to it. Take care. God bless. And remember, we'll see you at the top. Woohoo! I will see you over the top.
And we'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock at Al's Happy Hour. God bless. Thank you, Ms. Roder. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Woohoo! Thank you for the opportunity. God bless everybody.